The convicts who were there, they'd been troublemakers. Everybody wanted to see Al Capone. Alcatraz was an iconic image. A prison in the middle of San Francisco Bay was a great place to live, a great place to grow up. I have not met a single kid that grew up there that doesn't appreciate the fact that he was there. As kids, it was a phenomenal place to be. It was just home. We didn't lock our doors. We had great Halloweens. We had Christmas parties. It was a very special time for all of us. But the most powerful thing was Hollywood. I may have found a way out of here. And they created what I think is the mystique of Alcatraz. No one has ever escaped from Alcatraz. I'm in. My parents were on the island from 1956 till after the facility closed in 1963. We started our life in what was called Building 64. Our apartment was right here. If you look on the top floor, just barely above my finger, uh, that's part of the windows that we had. $18 a month was what the rent was, and we did actually have multi-million dollar views. Were we afraid? No, we weren't afraid. We didn't know any different. It was almost like being on a small island in Hawaii. They talked about, well, the kids weren't allowed to have guns. I distinctly remember having a toy rifle and toy pistol, and I actually have a pitcher, even with a toy cannon. It was a great picture of my dad and mom and two brothers and me. It was fun for me. You know, we, we grew up living on prison reservations. For us as small children, though, there were, in fact, some minor protections. One of them is we had small dog tags that identified us by name as being part of Alcatraz Island, with the idea being that if you told someone you were from Alcatraz Island, like a police officer, they probably wouldn't believe you. So we had those dog tags with us at that time. My father was transferred to Alcatraz. They did want staff to live there. 60 families, 100 kids. At that time, I was about four months old. So that's my first encounter with Alcatraz. As boys, we used to explore everywhere around the island. None of my friends, nor did I experience any kind of fear in relation to the inmates. It was pretty common knowledge among the parents, of course, that we were in a situation that could be dangerous. As a kid, you tried to get to where you shouldn't be, of course. We weren't as smart as we thought we were because they had a chance to go up into the top of the dock tower. And those guards saw us. They just didn't get excited because you could see everything. These are actually labeled as having been from Alcatraz, and it clearly is possibly one of the only ones in existence that actually has Alcatraz on it. We were not supposed to speak to the convicts. On rare occasion, we would have contact with them. They were not looking to get in trouble at all. They would just talk to us and just have a bit of a conversation. With it being with a, a little kid and a convict, it didn't last all that long. We were not afraid of them, and I never felt a fear uh, of convicts uh, in any of the prisons. Inmates used to pick up our white goods, like in the military, and do sheets and towels and things, and I used to help them load the trucks with the garbage. And that's about the only uh, interplay I had with them. Alcatraz, still escape-proof after one of the most desperate attempted prison breaks on record. When my father went back to work there in 1945, he, of course, was there during this infamous escape where inmates got a hold of guns, which was considered to be impossible. Five men, including two guards, are dead. Fourteen are wounded. The island was on fire. In the middle of the night, there was lights, explosions, things going on. Inside, armed and deadly dangerous, the desperate men were trapped. He stayed three days and two nights in that area below the kitchen with 18 inmates. He was lucky to survive. Very few people see this view anymore. We actually have three watercolors that were done by one convict that were given to my dad that are watercolors of Alcatraz. You've got down here the signature. And you can easily tell that it was from a convict's viewpoint. 
We've read through his story and everything, which is a fascinating story of the things he did that caused him to get into prison and to get into Alcatraz. It brings it alive. They had their weapons available to them. I can tell you for a fact, those have never been seen or been on the news in any fashion in the past. very first time I did go to the island, it was dramatic because the federal government had knocked the buildings down that I lived in. It was a blow to the chest. But then they tore these buildings down. And so I just got to a point to where I just tell stories. I was living in those cottages. He was living in the 64 building and to try to pass on that the island was a very special place to live, but it wasn't mystical like Hollywood has it. Everybody that goes by this now cannot see what I can see that this was a special place for those people that lived here. I was a very lucky person to have been able to live on that island and have those experiences. The kids on the island had a unique upbringing. In most cases, probably didn't recognize how unique their upbringing was until years later, you know, because it was just life. One of the reasons the island was closed down was because of the cost. We dumped all our sewage in the bay. We dumped our garbage in the bay. And so it would be very, very difficult to live on that rock today, even if you could. I know there have been a couple of different suggestions of, well, gee, why don't you take the uh, area of the island where the apartments were and turn them into bed and breakfasts, which I think there's zero chance of ever happening. I don't think that's actually in the island's best interest. But boy, if I had the opportunity to live there, uh, I sure would. <laughs>